Hey everyone, it's Kevin Quinn, and I am this week's Man of the Hour. Uh, on this podcast episode, we're going to be talking about all things creativity, life, everything deep, and we're also going to be talking about my new EP, It's About Time, and what that means. So here is the Man of the Hour himself, Kevin Quinn. Welcome to the podcast, buddy. What's up, man? Thank you for having me. Appreciate you know, it. You're up to so many great things is why we obviously got you on the show right now. You're going to drop something tomorrow. Uh, you've already dropped your very first debut EP, which is so exciting for those who don't know what an EP is. Essentially, it's an electronic album, right? Am I, am I right about that? Uh, yeah, short play. Short right, play. right. A short play album. And so I want to go into all of that with you, but I know that there's something super special about you and this EP um, entitled It's All About Time, right? Or It's About Time. I think that there's something here within the mantra of what you're building as a musician and you're young, right? And you also signed on to Capital uh, CMG, which is huge. Uh, but, but again, you're young. And I think there's a huge story as to what you behold, as to what all of us who are listening right now uh, can truly understand about you. Um, to start things off, man, I want to talk about this, this EP with you because I think that, you know, like from what I had read already, uh, you know, to quote you, you had already mentioned that you like to make the most of every moment. And that's when I was like, we got to get this guy on the podcast, period, done, blank. Uh, <laughs> that's so, cliche, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, as cliche as it may sound, man, you've, you've spoken to this quite a few times about this new EP. Um, yeah. I think it's the best way to live your life. So we're going to start there and then we'll go into a little bit of acting. Uh, but I think you have a lot to give, man. So again, I, um, when you thought of I mean, if you want to start with that, it's about time when you started creating that and then turning it into an EP, uh, you know, where was the value in it for you? For me, it was being able to do an artist project that I've never really had the chance to do before, you know, because I created an independent EP and I tried to take all my resources, all my time to put into it and make it something. And I just, it didn't take off the way I hoped it would. And I just don't think I had the resources. I didn't have the right label team. Uh, But with CMG, Capital CMG, I have that, you know, I have the resources, I have a great team who fights for me. And so when I tried to create, you know, like the debut EP, I had to first start off, like, what am I trying to say here, you know, and the reason why we chose It's About Time was because I was going through a phase in my life where, uh, you know, just in my young 20s, I've I've been starting to face my mortality for the first time, Mm. you know, because we all know we're going to die one day. uh, And that's something we live with. But I think we tend to forget it. And it's so easy to just take each day for granted. So, you know, it's kind of like that whole carpe diem thing. It sounds cliche, but at the same time, it didn't feel cliche because it feels like something that we so easily forget. And I wanted it to be a reiteration of that idea, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of like a reminder that you should make the most of every day. Uh, And that had been prompted because, you know, I had lost friends or, you know, I'd been through some traumatic things myself and they just weren't easy to deal with. And all this stuff started bubbling up in my young twenties again, uh, Mm -hmm. which was about the same time that I started writing the project. So I tried to take something negative and turn it into something completely positive. That's when I came up with it's about time. Mm. And then I've heard the song 10,000 times since I knew we were going to get you on the show. Thanks, Jen. But if you <laughs> had to you. give us a line in that song, because as, as artists, there's something there as you're writing the song out, right? As a singer songwriter, you know what these lines mean. When we hear it, we just hear melodies and, you know, and a rise and a fall, some good tunes and some yeah. good vibes, right? But for you, Kevin, is there a line in particular with It's About Time or within It's About Time rather that you feel like was kind of this, the, the sell for you, right? With everything you just mentioned about the goal of it. For me, it was always the, it's about, it's, it's about chasing all the beautiful things that make it worth the ride. It's about knowing that we're chasing all the beautiful things that make it worth the ride. Because I have been in a situation myself many times over where I forget that I'm chasing the beautiful things, or I feel like life isn't as beautiful as I would have imagined it to be, you know, at a certain point of time, you know, expectations and pressure and stress, you know, stuff like that. And for me, like that serves as a reminder that we should be chasing beautiful things that make it worth the ride uh, mm-hmm. because it's, it's easy to get caught up in the glass half empty kind of mentality. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, that line reminds me to look at the world glass half full. Mm-hmm. It always does. And I like that. Hell yeah. You have a very similar thought process than I, and you say, you say the, you look at the world, the world looks at you and thinks that you're 24 years old. Do you ever think that you're too young 
to, to have this, you know, full scope. And you'd mentioned losing some friends as well. Uh, so I'd like to, you know, if, if, if you don't mind opening up about that, but do you ever feel like there's a yeah. moment where you're like, damn, I'm 24 years old and you've All accomplished a shit ton of projects and your, your career is taking off, especially since you signed with this record label. And you know, what, what do you tell yourself when you think that you're too young? No, man, all the time. I mean, that goes through my head every day. I mean, my dad had a heart attack when he was uh, 40, 46, you know, and he's 60, almost 63 now. And I'm like, if he had the kind of pressure that I had you know, yeah. at, at my age, you know, he, he recognized, my whole family recognizes, you know, that I just got so much pressure for a 24 year old. And I, I think you would find that other people in the industry who get into it, just kind of fall into it or, or get into it by chance, have a similar issue is that I, I do feel young for it sometimes. I feel like I have the pressure and the obligations and responsibilities of a 40 year old, you know, CEO or something, just because all these eyes are on you and stuff like that. And it's just not always easy, man. So I have to kind of take myself out of it and, and just be grateful for the fact that I found myself where I am. Cause it's just so many people would love to get the kind of opportunities that I've been blessed with. And I know there's many others uh, who have also been blessed in this industry, but it's just, it's, that doesn't mean it's easy. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I struggle with that sometimes, but I just keep going. I put all that frustration or whatever it is. I just turn it into creativity uh, and mm -hmm. it ends up coming across as vulnerable in my work. And I feel like with it's about time, it's the most vulnerable I've ever been. So, mm -hmm. you know, you could deep dive and find all this stuff. Uh, and, and really find references of, of what may be going on in my life. And I wanted my music to be, you know, kind of me sharing a piece of my heart and, and what I'm going through. And I feel like the EP accomplished that. Man, you don't hear those words from men that are so young, right? Uh, or guys that are so young, right? Yeah. And I think that that's like, that, that's a great thing. Um, the entire album is one that I know that lyrics kind of unique at least in what we've what we've kind of encompassed with the songs that are in it they uniquely balance what you had just said vulnerability and growth which i know is something also that you you were kind of trying to discover and mold as you continue this music career which is really exciting and again like why i've always told folks that i'm obsessed with musicians is because through that work of music so much of what you're going through and what you're feeling you're trying to relay to those listeners which is so, yeah. so cool, especially at such a young age again. Uh, but what in, in discovering the growth and vulnerability of what you're producing as a singer and songwriter allow you to kind of like look forward to the future, right? And kind of have hope for that, um, a hope for what's to come and, and, and at least get excited, right? Like you had said, half full instead of half empty. Yeah, you know, you're talking about excitement and I was just talking to my girlfriend about this, but it's weird. The longer I work in this industry, the less excited I get, if I'm just being honest, you know, because it's kind of like when when you have a dream when you're a kid and, you know, you're working so hard to make it happen and it hasn't happened yet. And you're just waiting for the day that it finally happens. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you've got that optimism and that motivation and that drive. And I, it makes me think of a John Mayer song. I still got dreams, not the same. They don't fly as high as they used to. And like, that's kind of representative of, of where I find myself now, where I'm finally getting to the age where I'm settling into my career. Uh, mm. You know, I'm, I kind of see a little bit of what the future holds, whereas I didn't before. Uh, and for some reason, it, it feels more like a job now, man, you know? Uh, and And I've heard other artists talk about it. You know, I think I heard Billie Eilish talk about it on a podcast once, but, or, or one of her songs. It's just like, you know, it's, it's just getting older. It's coming of age. Uh, you know, you just, your dreams don't fly as high as they used to. Uh, mm -hmm. And something about that, you know, is, is beautiful, but also kind of sad at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's been something that I think as a common theme coming of age is all over the EP. Yeah, like, it's just, it's me learning about what adulthood is like for the first time mm. and really settling into that idea. Man. Well, speaking of adulthood real quick, I want you to plug this music video that's coming out tomorrow because I feel like as, for, for what you're speaking to and what you're feeling, I could imagine that that would come out in like a visual production. I mean, music's one thing, man. Like I can go click on Spotify right now, actually, and I can look at your great cover art with with the white background and the white sweater right and your signature oh, yeah, yeah. but 
but, but what I think is when you watch a music video, which is what I want everybody to go click on tomorrow, dude, I mean, listen, the song in and of itself is, is very therapeutic and I've listened to it on and on and on and on again. Um, and for anybody listening right now to this show, you could imagine that when you're, when you're able to hit replay, you really want to understand those lyrics. But as you guys went into video production, um, yeah. you know, what, what did the story change at all? Is something about maybe how you wanted to portray everything you just mentioned, like something about it is, is exciting. But when you say it's about time, right. And you start thinking about the fact that you're even getting stagnant at 24 years old in your career, like, wait, Kevin Quinn, like what? So what in that music video do you think brings out some some form of optimism in in terms of what you're trying to portray you know i love that it's kind of like a breakfast club reference because to me that whole yeah. movie i don't know when that came out what 1985 and that whole movie to me was one of my favorites growing up and as i get older myself i start to watch that movie in a different light uh because it takes on a new meaning as an adult watching it because you know if you're a kid watching that movie you look up to these high schoolers who are coming to terms with their own adulthood, coming, coming of age. And you look at them like that hasn't happened to me yet. Mm -hmm. But then when you're in a position, like I find myself now at 24 going on 25, I feel like that either is happening, happening to me or it's already happened. So I look at those kids now and they look younger to me in the movie for the first time. Yeah. Uh, and so for me, this music video was kind of like getting to revisit that coming of age for the first time again. You know, because I graduated high school in 2015. That's in my past now. But, you know, these I get to play a high school kid, high school senior who's, you know, coming of age and, and uh, realizing for the first time in the music video that it really is about time. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's funny because this song, when we wrote it, originally we had different lyrics and it wasn't until we revisited those lyrics that it took on a new meaning. But the whole hook, the end of the hook, it's about time. It was more of a meaning like it's about time that we do something it's about time that we this and that and then as we rewrote it and and brought in another writer paul duncan uh it's it the hook took a different meaning where the hook landed on the idea that it's about time itself which is yeah, you kind of have to wrap your head around you know because we were playing it before like it's about time uh, that we do this it was almost like a continuous thought and and when we brought in paul duncan to help finish it it landed on the it's about time and it made it so much more cohesive to me that it's about time itself mm. because time is of the essence and it's always fleeting and it's something that we can't hold on to or grasp mm -hmm. it's something that's always escaping us you know and i feel like that's mm. so representative of coming of age or or growing pains whatever you call it but we we saw that in the music video too so for me it was like the breakfast club concept in this music video mm. was so perfect for the message that we were trying to relay. I love that. I was looking at your Instagram and I saw the breakfast club references and I was like, I was waiting for you to say something about it, dude. Okay. Wait, yeah. I want to talk about the other songs that are also on this album too. Cause there's a lot of yeah, there's a couple meaning more. to those, right? There's a lot of meaning to that. Before we get into that though, I think that there's more to be said about time. I've had that conversation at least four or five times in the past 80 weeks on this show and we all look at it very differently but if you're listening right now you're probably thinking the exact thing the exact same thing i'm thinking which is like all right kevin so like yes we're looking at time in like a very finite way but someone yeah. like you who is who's busy and like you're in nashville right now and about to go back to la probably after you finish recording and doing all the things da, da, da. like yes you are on one spectrum of busy right compared to the average human living on this planet so then like, that's where it is. That's, this is where I get to ask the advice questions, right? On the podcast for you. If Absolutely. you had to give, even, I don't care how old you are, you could be 24, 42, 97. Like when you look at it right now, you're at your mature mindset of time, especially after having done that music video and having, having the other person come in to, um, to really explain it in a different way or like, have you guys feel it in a different way. But when you think about time now and how you plan to use it, going forward even today or tomorrow right tomorrow when the music video drops like that's that's cool stuff but there's only so many hours in the day so when you can tell us how you plan to use your time or how how you structure your schedule and stuff like what goes through your head there i'm way too hard on myself that's the truth i mean yeah you're absolutely right we only have so many hours in a day but i do feel like part of the reason why i've been able to make it this far in my career uh, and just who I am as a person is I never stop working, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily a good thing. 
Uh, but for this industry and the kind of energy it requires, it's not really a bad thing either. And I think that that's what's actually gotten me uh, to the point that I am now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I remember uh, what a one of my label team, uh, uh, I think it was Brad O'Donnell, who's uh, uh, president of Capital CMG. We sat down for a meeting and, you know, he was getting to know me when I first signed. And and uh, he's like, he, he, I remember he asked something. He was like, you know, do you find that, like how, how immersed in your work are you? How, how hard do you find that you're working? And, uh, you know, or do you just kind of let it come to you? And I, and I said, you know, when it comes to creativity, I definitely let it come to me, but I, I have this like, drive that I can't explain that I'm always trying to outdo myself. And he said, it's funny you say that because I've found that the greatest, most successful musicians have that edge of drive, whatever you call mm-hmm. that where it's, they just never stop until they accomplish what it is they set out to do. Uh, and, and for some reason I have that same thing. Uh, so, you know, I'm just in the future, I'm just excited to, to just recognize that and seize that really just mentality. And, and, you know, I don't ever want to stop being a workaholic, you know? Um, and, and it's tough for me to balance my personal life as I do that, but I just rather be busy. Like it gets me out of my head. It gets me out of, whatever shit is going through my life it just makes me happy when i'm working so i never want to spend like i don't i don't think i'm going to retire you know uh, and nor should i even announce it if i were down the line mm-hmm. i just never want to stop working because i find so much creative fulfillment in doing what i do and you know for god having let me be able to do that is such a blessing so i just want to make the most of of all the time that i've been given and i know that life is short and which kind of makes me sad, <laughs> you know, you, we all wish it was longer uh, or that we had more time. And, but I think, you know, to answer your question, the way I plan to use my time going forward is to just keep doing what I'm doing because it's working. Kevin, you had just mentioned that you're going to keep doing what it's, what you're doing because it's working. I've often said that too. And I think a lot of people who are tuning in right now have also told themselves that because in order to not get so anxious about the future or to beat yourself up about where you're currently at, right. Or to, to harp on maybe some things that have happened in the past, you do want to put yourself in this mindset where you need to be okay with the process that's coming up, right. Or the process that you're going through. Um, And so speak to that with us for a second, because I feel like when you as an artist, as a creative person, as someone who performs all the time, constantly continue to think about what's to come, you can't work on yep. the current project if you're thinking about the next. And so what, what in your, um, I would say headspace, but like what in your mindset is, is really getting you um, level headed about all of that? You know, it's something that I'm trying to do in my career, but also trying to do in my personal life for the first time, which is to just be present. I have mm. a really tough time uh, just being present. I think for me, it's it's a little bit of a fear or anxiety about the unknown. So when I think about future projects or, or what the future holds, it gives me a bit of anxiety. I, you know, I like the, a little bit of control to be able to control, you know, the situation that I'm in or, or the outcome of, of something that's, you know, been on my mind or worrying me. Uh, and you just can't get that with the future because of time, you know? Um, so for me, it's like, I'm, I'm just learning to be present for the first time and it's difficult, you know, it, it's not easy, but at the same time, I feel like, especially my music, when I get into the studio and I'm just present or when I get on stage and I'm just present and not, mm. you know, thinking too much about it, that's where my best work comes from. So, and, you know, I think to, to the EP and, you know, the process of writing that I was just so present in the room. Uh, there was this one song that I, I was surprised. Well, there's going to be a time and place for it to come out and, and we're already working on uh, producing it, but uh, it's probably going to be on the next record at this point. But it was one of my favorites from the group of, you know, from the writing process when we were trying to put this thing together. Uh, and this song, I, I was just, it was a bad day for me. I was going through some stuff and I walk into the studio, you know, it was like a double session day, the second session of the day, 5.30 PM. Uh, I've got five hours on the clock with, with these writers and I just sit down and I start vibing out with them and I'm not thinking about anything. Like, I'm not even, you know, I'm not even trying to put lyrics to it. I'm, I'm literally just tapping a key at the piano and trying to find a melody and, and see where it takes me, you know? And so I was at the piano and I just start, you know, pressing the keys and then it led to a melody. And then all of a sudden I, I hear myself like playing this full on song. I have chords, I have a chorus and I hear myself mumbling these lyrics. Um, and it, it felt so right just instinctually doing that in the moment 
that uh, we, we ended up putting a, you know, my top liner overheard me just messing around on the piano. And she's like, what do you mm-hmm. think about this? And then she put together this whole chorus. And I was like, that is brilliant. I love it. So we just caught such a vibe just by being present. And yeah. that night, that session, uh, we, we didn't stop at 1030. We, we went all the way till 1030 a.m. We spent 12 hours through the night just catching a vibe because we believed so strongly in what we were doing. Mm. And it just felt so natural and in the moment and present. And now we have a song, now we have a cut, you know, and I think this song is going to be huge when people hear it, uh, which I assume it would be on the next project. But it was so representative to me. It's like, if you just let it go and you stop trying or you stop trying to expect what, what the future holds or, or what you are trying to do and holding on to it so dearly and mm. just let it go, that's when the creative energy flows. That's when the best things happen. And that song, I mean, is one of, I can't wait for them to hear it because I think they're going to love it. It's one of the best songs I've written so far. And, you know, it's not even on this project. So the, even the stuff that's coming, it's like by being present, uh, you know, and just, just going with the flow and letting my creativity flow and my mind be open. I've got something really good to present the fans down the line, you know? So I'm trying to do that with everything, you know, even with acting and, and you know, cause I got an acting career as well. I just try to, how do I say my line in a way that I'm figuring this out for the first time as the character? You know, what do I, what do I hear for the first time? Mm. It's just so synergistic to me, like the creativity and being in the moment, uh, just, just feeling in the moment, whether it's a line, whether it's a lyric, it's all the mm. same to me. Mm. So one of the most rewarding parts about creativity, you know, it's just finding it in the moment and learning something, whether about you or the character, you know? Mm. Well, I think that's always been a thing of entertainers that I had to, I personally have to respect and anybody who's tuning in same to you. I mean, you, you have to think about it this way. Anybody who's in the creative line of work have always said those exact words. You have to keep your mind open. You have to be present. You have to be intentional. You have to yeah, feel what you're go. feeling. Yeah, and I, mean, I think that and it doesn't matter if you're a finance guy downtown or if you're working in corporate catering, uh, you know, like creativity is a must in any career, in any form of life. If you're a farmer, you need to be creative on how you're, picking up oh, yeah. cow manure and feeding your cow like what so i think yeah. you're onto something there which is is very valuable to hear because i feel like if anybody's going to pursue a big project like a film right or a huge ep to launch you then get to a position where you're like yo you have to have creative freedom you have to have a creative space no distractions no thinking about the right. past or future and then sitting down and being present that is huge yeah it's something that i think a lot of people need to practice it needs, it needs to be the right environment to harness the creativity and hold on to yeah. it. You know, as entertainment, you're absolutely right. You know, like an architect is creative. A, uh, you know, uh, whatever, a, a doctor is creative. You know, they, there's different facets for creativity mm-hmm. in each line of work. It's just the difference that I found with entertainers. We're outwardly creative. Like everyone assumes sure. that music, uh, film, whatever it is, that these are pretty creative mediums. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really just like, how do you, but we approach it in the same way a doctor would, you know, we have a process, we have, uh, you know, uh, things that we've learned along the way, technique, yeah. craft, whether it's in our songwriting or the way we say our lines, you know, as actors. Um, so it's really just finding the best way to harness that creativity and how do you create the best product in the end based on all these processes? And that's what mm-hmm. I found. And then the creation process too. I think bef- before the uh, commercial break, I'd mentioned we were going to bring up over and over again, and I'm still breathing. So as you're creating those types of songs too, in addition to the, to the main one you just put out, you think of like how, which are by, by far really fantastic, by the way, you know, Thanks, when you think of mixing the genre of inspiration and pop, a lot of people do it, right? I guess, but most right. of the time it's just pop. And a lot of times it's about sex and partying or living your life, da, 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 da. but you're intentional about making sure that it's pop plus inspiration, which are my favorite genres, which is why I attach to music. So, but when you're thinking about any song that's on this EP and then your intention about having those two genres, make sure that they're kind of one in one. What is that? For me, it all started when I did the A Week Away film on Netflix, which was a pretty squeaky clean, you know, <laughs> I think I... I'm not one to read reviews of my own movies, but I think there was <laughs> something like that. This film is like as squeaky clean as a square of green jello. And I laughed. So I was like, that's pretty true. Uh, so when I did, I did like a promotional tour for the album, the soundtrack album. Uh, and I was out on the road and I was singing to, you know, these crowds of like 20,000 for this CCM concert. And, and I just thought to myself, it would be such a shame if 
I made music that these people who are absorbing this, who are loving this, supporting me up on stage right now and loving what they're seeing, if I couldn't give them something that they could listen to. Mm. And that for me was enough that I was like, look, I, 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 I'm a pop artist. I, I grew up listening to pop. I consider myself pop. I want to make pop music, but there's a, there was like a hole in the market of just like a straight up crossover between ins- inspirational, you know, Christian music and pop. And I'm like, why do I have to sacrifice the two? Why can't I just split it right down the middle? Uh, and I feel like I've been able to do that. And, and, you know, as I took these label meetings and, and, you know, even with capital before we met, it, it's, it sounds great in theory to be able to pull off a project like that, but it's incredibly difficult. I mean, even in the writing room, I have to be so particular about the, the lyrics or the message that I'm trying to get across. But if I do it right, that's when it works. And it, and it does work. There's like that one song out of every 10 that I write where I'm like, this is it. This is what I'm trying to say. Wow. This appeals to the CCM market. This appeals to the pop market. You know, if I'm a pop listener in Los Angeles or New York and I just want to listen to a good pop song, I've got that with the song. I can listen to Kevin's stuff, you know, or if I'm in Nashville and I grew up in the church and Christianity is something that's super dear and important to me, you know, this checks every box. Like this is positive. Mm-hmm. It's inspiring. It, 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 it's soul caffeine for me. Um, it's, you know, so it, it, it depends on what kind of listener it is. And I find myself appealing to both of those those markets and those kinds of listeners and for me it just Mm. opens up this door like to make music that's way more accessible than one or the other would be by themselves so that's been the other most rewarding thing is just having the creative freedom and and ironically i thought the freedom create creatively would be more limiting doing a crossover project but because it's made it more accessible to both the you know both these sides it's actually given me more leeway to uh you know, really get away with a lot of cool stuff in my music. Soul caffeine. I just put that down with five exclamation marks. I don't think I've ever written five exclamation marks. Soul caffeine. Yeah. You're right. You're we on the soul something. caffeine. We do, Especially man. You know, it, it, people say it all the time. Oh, in these times that we're in right now, but we really yeah. do, man. You know, and you bring up a week away, which is huge on Netflix. And I think if anybody, you know, who if you're listening right now, jump over to Netflix. I still have to. I watched the trailer. I watched, you know, Kevin's stuff on Instagram with his co-star. I I think it's great. I, I'm a fan of High School Musical too. So I was like, oh my god, there's a new Zac yeah, Efron, yeah. like maybe Zac Efron. Anyway, Same I'm kidding. Thing. Right, right, right. Like when you have <laughs> feel good musicals nothing beats it. Nothing beats a hairspray. Nothing beats you know a week away. Nothing beats a High School Musical. Whatever. Anyway, soul caffeine, that's huge. People need it. People want it and people love it. So you're onto yeah. something when you're thinking about marketing yourself, which I admire you for, dude. Um, you know, so I guess like moving on without moving on, you, you'd you mentioned acting and you brought up a week away on Netflix, uh, but you're, you, you didn't mention shameless Chicago PD and Disney's bunked, right? So like you are really building out an acting career too. Um, I couldn't do it thought I was going to try to sing. I thought I was going to be on Disney channel. And I was like, screw it. I'm going to be <laughs> hey, a you sure you couldn't do it. I bet you could. Oh, dude. You put in the hours. Of, you, no, yeah. Okay, fine. But like, I, I came a different route. So that's how we met. Right. Which is yeah, also pretty honest. cool. But the, you know, do you think the acting and the music uh, side, side by side is kind of what's working for you? Or do you often think like, oh, you yeah. may have to end up choosing one or both is good? No, I mean, Hey, I look at Justin Timberlake. I'm like that guy you know he'll do he did his man of the woods tour in 2018 then he drops that and and you know he finishes that project moves on to a movie then when he's done yeah. with his movie you know he, he goes back on tour for the album it's just for me i i just don't see a reason why i have to sacrifice one for the other sure now that said there might be periods of time extended periods of time where i am working on one more than the other but the goal for me is to always be able to balance them. And I'm actively trying to balance them Mm because I wasn't sure if I would be able to balance the two, but so far I've been able to. And if anything, like I said, you know, they're just super synergistic and and helping both, you know, all facets of creativity for me and and being able to express it through those mediums. So I don't, I don't want to sacrifice one for the other. I don't see why I have to, uh, Mm. even though in theory you you would think that I might have to. Um, And it it really has just been a, a, actively trying to balance uh the two and i've been able to do it so you know i'd love to i'd love to do my big budget studio film and and lead that you know and and uh work up towards an oscar nod in my 40s or 50s if that's in the cards i'd love to i don't see why i can't do that and actively work towards that uh and not you know actively pursue the grammy at the same time or the uh you know arena stadium tour 
for me, it's just, it's just different ways of creativity and expressing myself. And, and mm. if anything, I like being able to do both. It's rewarding to be able to do both, uh, especially mm. with a personality like mine. So I, I'm, I'm not going to stop, you know, can't stop won't stop baby y'all i think there's one thing that we (laughs) (laughs) there's one thing we've learned about kevin quinn uh you know not only are you about the good vibes good stories great storytelling optimism uh but you're showing that through your work which is so so cool and i think if any of us have had a hard day you're someone that they're going to click play or you know watch on the screen which is which is so great then i have to ask you kevin when you think of your hardest days um I guess the ones that you would never really expect, what do you tell yourself? And then how do you get through them? This is one of my favorite questions to ask anybody like yourself, because, you know, like we only see like the good and great Kevin Quinn. Right. Yeah. Uh, But on your hardest days, what are you telling yourself? How do you get through that stuff? Oh, dude, most dude, most days are hard. It's just who I am. I mean, I, I, I really struggle with those tough days. If I'm having a bad day, it hits me hard. I cannot see past that cloud. Uh, and it's it, like, for me, what I have to do, I find, uh, is just deal with it and, and let those feelings overtake me. And that's not how I should be doing it. You know, I should be like mm. the riverbed watching the river just flow over me and brush it off. But for some reason, I hold on to stuff, man. Like, I... I don't know if it's the pursuit of perfection and not making mistakes, which, you know, I, you could argue that I, I try to do with my art as well. Um, but for some reason, I have a really tough time letting stuff go. And I have a really mm-hmm. tough time not beating myself up for mistakes that I feel could have been prevented. And when that happens in a day to day, I mean, I should be handling it different, but for some reason, that's how my brain operates. Um, so, but that said, yeah, I have coping tools. You know, I, I have a network of people that I can always call uh, where, you know, I don't always, uh, you know, try to, I, I have a network of creative outlets, which, which helps, you know, like mm-hmm. just being able to put, for me, the most rewarding thing is just being able to, to put it in my lyrics and put it on screen. Um, so it's tough, but that for me is my therapy. That's kind of the truncated version of what I'm trying to say. 100%. And then I want to wrap on time. I think that's like one of the the biggest soul caffeinated things you said today was that, you know, you, <laughs> you, time, right? It is about time. It's about time we do something. It's about time we change things. It's about time we feel something, but it's also about time. So yeah, time as we wrap this conversation, buddy, you know, you... I mean, you're 24, I'm 25, right? We're like a quarter of gotcha. through with, the, with all this stuff. And I think that yeah. it's a great place to be, to be a little younger on the end of things. But even if you're 80 and you're tuning into this, I think that there's a huge opportunity to realize that there's a lot that we could have. So when you think of time and the abundance of it that we have, as opposed to, you know, not enough of it that we may not have, you know, what, what would you tell someone who thinks that they don't have enough time to kind of change things, activate, uh, pursue what they want to pursue? Cause you've done a lot and you're 24, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey, I mean, I, I realize you're 25. I mean, so I imagine you're probably <laughs> going through something similar, you know, I mean, it's just that age when you, you start to realize that you do have a limited amount of time for the first time. So I, I don't know if you've gone through something similar at this age, but it, it's comforting to know we're the same age and probably going through it, you know, together. Uh, and yeah, there's man. a lot more like us, but you know, for me, if you find like, if the issue is that someone feels they don't have enough time or that time isn't going, time isn't uh, showing what they had hoped it would work out to be, then I would just say, change it. Like, can I, I was on the crew team uh, in high school. I rode crew and my coach uh, f- for a year, he would just tell me nonstop, you can't complain about what you can change. And that's always stuck with me for a while. You know, um, it's like when it comes to time, how do you spend it? How do you, how do you make the most of it? Um, and if things aren't going your way, then how do you make the change so that it does go the way that you want it to, you know? Uh, and that's something I've taken in my own life and, in my music and and just in who I am as a person. Um, And I've had to make those changes in my life, you know, because I felt like I was wasting time. You know, I've been in 
dark places, man, where I was like, something needs to change because this cannot continue. This is not sustainable. Uh, but to have that realization and then remember what he said, you know, you, you can't complain about the things you can change, then change it, actively make that change. And when you do, if you do it right uh, and you got a good head on your shoulders, then you will find that time is showing the fruits of your labor and that work that you put in, put in to, to make that change and, and be better and, and make the most of your time that you're seeing that happen, you know, and, and that takes time itself, that change. But yeah, I, I just try to stand back, be self-reflective, introspective, you know, how are things going? How's my life going? What could I be doing better? How can I improve as a person in my art, in my music? Uh, and then I, I implement those changes. And I think it takes a mature person to do that. You know, people always joke, I'm like a 45 year old and a 24 year old's body. <laughs> Uh, but I've had to make those changes and I'm glad I did. Mm. Kevin Quinn, you know, dude, I couldn't have asked for a better conversation with you, man. Um, yeah, yeah. I wish we had more time to be honest. I mean, we're, we're going through the weeds here on, on some deep stuff, man. <laughs> musicians are deep. What can I say? But no, every, I feel like musicians are deep, pal. <laughs> yeah, and I think that like, you know, part of, part of having such good raw conversations like this is because I know people who are tuning in are like, wait, there's a hook. Wait, what'd he say? Yeah, and, yeah. and dude, everything oh, yeah. you're throwing, I think people are, or everything you're putting down, people are picking up. That's the phrase. And, that, yeah. That's what it's all about, man. Like yeah. for me, I'm doing winter jam right now, this tour I was talking about. And when I do like my meet and greet the, at the end of the night, there's nothing that makes me happier than seeing these kids faces light up. I'm like that's doing God's work right there. You know, like I try not, I'm not even doing it for me at this point. I'm just doing it for these kids. I'm doing it for God. I'm doing it, you know, I'm doing it for the bigger, the bigger purpose, the bigger reason. And, you know, for some reason surrendering to that and just, you know, it's, it's just such a, it's something I find myself doing for the first time. And, you know, mm. you let go of, of the anxieties when you walk up on stage and you just like turn it on and you let go of the future, you let go of the past and you're just present, you know, kind of yeah. what we were talking about earlier. But uh, for me, it's just the kids faces. And, and if they respond to this music, if they can appreciate it, if they can relate to it and like the kind of music that, you know, you're turning on over and over again at one in the morning when you're having a bad day and, and bawling your eyes out, I want that kid to respond to my music. You know, I want mm -hmm. that kid to, to, trust me you know that i'm gonna help them get through what, whatever it is they're going through because i've been there too mm. that's the most important thing for me you have the 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 understanding and the outlook that that most people hope and wish for if you're tuning in right now and you heard any of that that's literally the epitome of finding purpose with uh, with a greater mission and what you get to do uh per professionally you know and like we you should said, all you be don't want to retire yeah man i mean it, it not even musicians like we should all be striving for that. No matter who we are, no matter what we do, like we got to just serve the greater good, you know? And mm. if we do our part, then the world is a better place and sounds great in theory, but it, it takes all of us, you know, not just some of us. And, and I, I feel a certain responsibility to do my part. And mm. the part that I can do is, is what I'm good at. I'm good at making music. You know, I'm not good at, I, I can't work at the accounting firm because I'm great at crunch, crunching numbers. That's why I didn't, you know, I, that's why I chose a creative job, but I'm, I'm trying to do my part. And that's why I like clean music, inspiring music, positive music. That's oh, what's yeah. important to me. And it was just a creative choice that I, I did with this project. And I'm glad I did. I don't have any regrets about that. And we don't have any regrets listening to it, man. Well, listen, Kevin, thank you again. And I hope y'all uh, get to see more of Kevin because uh, you can follow him on Instagram and TikTok at Kevin G. Quinn. Uh, also, be sure to check out his latest EP, It's About Time. Uh, and wait, there's one more. You got the Netflix movie, A Week Away, oh, yeah. <laughs> a feel-good musical. Uh, it's only available on Netflix now. So be sure to check that out. Buddy, thanks again. Uh, not for just thank joining you, me on man. this podcast, for, for inspiring us through this conversation we just had and everything that you're bringing to audiences around the world, man. Um, and listen, enjoyed it. Yeah, nothing but a smile and good energy. Like I always sign off on my emails, buddy. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you for the time and, and thanks for the conversation. It was a good one. I appreciate it.